will strike to Griffin on the outside corner. Well, wherever you are and whatever you're doing tonight, we hope you enjoy this broadcast and stick with us now as the Tribe goes on the warpath against Toronto. The windup by Barker and the strike one pitch to Alfredo Griffin is all the way back to the screen, one and one. It is raining here at Municipal Stadium. And it has been for about the last nine or ten minutes. But it is not a heavy rain. And it's lightly falling in the outfield regions. So what else is new? The rain has been with us for about the last four weeks. Griffin, Mosby, and Bell to face Len Barker here in the first inning for Toronto. Griffin hitting at 208, no home runs, and 13 RBIs. The 1 1 pitch by Barker is swing and a miss on the fastball, 1 and 2. Actually, Griffin tipped that ball into the glove of catcher Ron Hassett. Griffin is a switch hitter. From the left side, he has 7 of his 13 RBIs, and he's hitting much better from the port side at 250. 0 for 8 thus far this season against the Indians. Barker leans over and gets the sign from Ron Hasse and okays it. Large Lenny rocks into that big windup. And the 1 2 pitch to Griffin. There's a tapper past the mound. Verizer charges it short, gloves the ball to throw to first, and they just get him by a half a step. A nice play by Tom Verizer on this soft grass here at Municipal Stadium, and you can't waste a motion with Alfredo Griffin going down the line. Nev, tomorrow when the folks come to the ballpark, they'll be able to cast their ballots for the 1981 American League All-Star team, the only All-Star team, the American and National League. It'll be starting in the ballparks tomorrow, and that balloting goes right on until July the 1st, and then on July the 14th, the All-Star game played right here in Cleveland. And you really want to check those ballots this year because the Indians have a number of candidates on the ballot this year, and I think eight in all, so make sure you punch them out. Here is Lloyd Mosby, and he looks at a strike in the outside corner. Mosby hitting at 238, four home runs, and 13 RBIs. One for four against the Indians last week in Toronto. That was the disputed double that broke up Burt Blylevin's no-hitter in the ninth inning. Mosby swings and slashes a grounder to the left side. Verizer has it, throws, and Mosby is out number two. So Tommy Verizer handles the first two chances flawlessly tonight. Back in the lineup after suffering a strained muscle in his leg. Tommy was rested during the three-game set in Chicago. Two down, nobody on. Here is George Bell. Bell, the rookie outfielder for the Blue Jays, hitting at 286 with three home runs and seven RBIs. Two for four against the Indians last week, including a run batted in. Bell hits from the right side. He stands deep in the batter's box, and now he steps out. Hera, Verizer, Kuiper, and Hargrove around the Indians infield from third to first, and Ron Hasse is behind the plate. Charbonneau, Manning, and Orta from left to right in the outfield. The windup by Barker, the pitch to Bell. There's a ground ball to Hargrove. He gets it on the second up. He'll run to the bag himself, and Len Barker works a 1-2-3 inning here in the first for the try. For the Blue Jays, no runs, no hits, no errors, nothing across, and after one half inning tonight, it's Toronto nothing and the Indians coming to bat. In the first inning for the Indians, Rick Manning will lead off. He'll be followed by George Orta and Mike Cargrove. The tribe set to face the young right-hander of the Toronto Blue Jays, Luis Leal. This is Leal's first starting assignment against the Indians. In Toronto last week, he worked a couple of scoreless relief innings against the tribe. On the season, Leal is 2-3 and three with a 3.97 earned run average. This will be his sixth start of the season and his tenth appearance overall. He came up to the Blue Jays toward the end of last season and posted a 3-4 and four record with a 4.50 earned run average in 10 starting assignments, and he had one complete game. Leal does not have a complete game on his ledger this year. Leal was born in Venezuela. Rick Manning leads it off, hitting at 159, no home runs, two RBIs, and he lines a base hit to left field on the first pitch delivered by Leal. Bell plays the ball near the line, gets it back in, and Rick Manning starts the tribe rolling in the first with a single to left. So Manning wastes no time, and now the rain is coming down harder here at the stadium. Really a mist that's sort of blowing around and swirling right now, a very light rain. The Indians already have five postponements thus far in this young season, and they don't want any more. Not at this stage of things, especially coming back home after a profitable and successful trip. Here is George Orta. 
in right field tonight, hitting a 254 with a home run and eight RBIs. And you folks know when that home run came two nights ago to bust up the 16-inning marathon against the White Sox. That was one of the sweetest round trippers I've ever seen, and ditto for George Jordan as it came against his former teammates. The pitch to George, a fastball strike at the knees. George did not play in the two games against the Blue Jays last week in Toronto. Lifetime hitting 276 against Toronto pitching. The Blue Jays have Danny Ainge at third, Alfredo Griffin at short, Damaso Garcia at second, and John Mayberry at first. Buck Martinez is doing the catching. The stretch by Leali throws to first, and Manning is back. George Bell is in left field, Rick Bassetti in center, and Lloyd Mosby in right. They play ordered the opposite way. Bassetti shades him into left center by about two or three steps. The strike one pitch to Orta inside and low. A good stop by Martinez, one and one. The Indians in first place in the American League East with a 15-8 and eight record and a game ahead of Baltimore and New York. The Tribe has been in first place for the past 19 days, and they want to keep it that way. Indian starters have been absolutely sensational this year, to say the least. The stretch by Leal, the 1-1 pitch to order. There's a popper foul sliced into the seats to the third base side of home plate, 1-2. and two. The Indians are 4-4 four and four here on the lakefront this season. Toronto on the road is 6-7. and seven. Not a bad road record for the Blue Jays. Overall, they're 10-21 and 21, and in the basement of the American League East, nine games behind the Tribe. They just got done being blanked in consecutive games by the Orioles. The one-two pitch to order. He swings and pops it up into shallow right center. Back there is Damaso Garcia. Now Griffin calls for it, and he makes the catch as Garcia yields to the shortstop, Alfredo Griffin. Orta pops out, one down in the first. So here comes first baseman Mike Hargrove. Hargrove hitting at 213, no home runs and nine RBIs. Hargrove went two for seven against the Blue Jays in the two games in Toronto. And he's a lifetime 317 hitter against Toronto pitching. In the outfield for the Blue Jays, it's George Bell in left, Rick Bassetti in center, and Lloyd Mosby in right. And let's see how they play Hargrove. They play him fairly deep, and Bassetti is shading him to pull by about two steps into right center. Every team plays Hargrove a different way. Leal with the stretch and the pitch, a strike at the knees. Lifetime in the series between Toronto and Cleveland, the Indians own the advantage. The Tribe has won 36 and lost 20 against the Blue Jays. And this is year number five for Toronto in the American League. Managed by Bobby Maddock. The strike one pitch to Hargrove, a swing and a foul tip behind Martinez, strike two. Today is the birthday of Rick Waits. Rick's celebrating his birthday today, and he's not celebrating a happy birthday because he was sent home from the ballpark a little while ago. He's suffering from the flu or the miseries or something. And so we wish him a happy birthday in his absence. Number 29 for the waiter. And it's too bad he can't be with us here at the ballpark tonight, but Rick, if you're listening, best wishes. The strike two pitch to Hargrove inside. He backs out of the way, one and two. They tell us that the start of tonight's game in Detroit with the Tigers hosting the Angels has been delayed by rain. They were rained out last night. That was against the Mariners. So tonight, the Angels and Tigers are having difficulty getting underway. That is not an encouraging sign weather-wise. The 1-2 pitch to Hargrove. He taps it on the ground. Past Mayberry and past Garcia into right field. Legging it around to third is Manning, and the Indians have runners on first and third with one out here in the first inning. That ball had eyes. It got right under the glove of Mayberry as he went to his right and passed Damaso Garcia, and it trickled into the outfield grass by about 15 or 20 feet. Hargrove will take it, and so will the Indians. So here comes Andre Thornton. And now they charge John Mayberry with an error on that play. They take away the base hit from Hargrove, and Mayberry is assessed with an error. I did not see him get the glove on the ball, well, but it matters not. Doesn't necessarily have to touch the ball. It's really a judgment call, call on the official scorer. 
So Hargrove at first and Manning at third, and here is Andre Thornton hitting at 237. He swings and it's a fly ball into shallow center field. It may not be deep enough. Pacetti is there. He makes the catch. Manning is tagging and coming home. Here comes the throw, the slide, and Manning is in there. The Indians lead one to nothing. Andre Thornton with a sacrifice fly to center field. Not a bad throw by Bassetti, Ned, it was right on the money. It was a good throw, Herb, and the issue was right and down until Manning just beat it with a slide at home plate. Down to second went Mike Hargrove. The ball was not cut off. So the Indians draw first blood here tonight, and that's Andre's 12th run batted in, and he leads the Indians in that department. Thornton entered tonight's ball game hitting 5 for 18, 278 with runners in scoring position. The Indians a 217 hitting team with men in scoring position. And digging in at home plate is Ron Hassey. Hassey hitting an even 200, 4 for 20 on the year with no home runs and one RBI. 1 for 4 against Toronto last week. A career 304 average against the Blue Jays. Now Leal steps off after taking his stretch. Hassey this year is 0 for 4 with men in scoring position. He does have a sacrifice fly and an RBI. And, of course, Ron is just now getting back into the swing of things after being off for two weeks with a leg injury. The pitch to Hassey down low, ball one. Hassey last year was the Indians' most productive hitter in the clutch with men in scoring position. Out to home plate, or to the mound, goes home plate umpire Rich Garcia. They're going to call for some of that drying agent because already the mound has become very soggy. So here comes groundskeeper Marshall Bossard with two of his troops in tow in the wheelbarrow with the drying agent, and they will pay a visit to the mound to do some landscaping. Rich Garcia will supervise out there on the mound. Luis Leal gets a tongue depressor from the Blue Jays trainer, and he will use that to clean off his spikes and remove that caked up mud and dirt in between the spikes. Now Marshall Bossard liberally spreads around that drying agent on the top part of the mound. I would imagine, Herb, the footing gets treacherous in a couple of ways out there. It gets very sticky and gummy, for one thing, well, and then it also gets in, slick. Cakes up in between the spikes, and then when you come drive down, you land, you slide. And also, then, where you land, if the mound gets wet enough, that gets to be sloppy and muddy, and it's very hard to hold your footing. And, of course, for a pitcher, it's dangerous. Not only that he might hurt his arm, you hurt your back, you know, when you land and you don't have a firm anchor, why start sliding around. Now Marshall Bossard is around the home plate area, also spreading the drying agent on either side of home plate and also near the catcher's position. And the work has been completed. And Rich Garcia towels off home plate. In the American League tonight, Kansas City did not score in the first inning at Boston. Rich Gale against Crawford of the Red Sox. California and Detroit being delayed by rain at the start of that contest. The Mariners are in Yankee Stadium. That game starts in just about 10 minutes. Allard for Seattle and Nelson, young Gene Nelson, the 20-year-old for the Yankees. Now the ball one pitch to Hassey is at the knees for a strike one and one. Oakland will be at Milwaukee tonight. The slumping Brewers have dropped their last three ball games. McCaddy against Vukovic. Texas at Chicago. Jenkins against Dotson. And Baltimore at Minnesota. Martinez against Redfern. The 1-1 pitch to Hassey. He wraps a line drive. Base hit into right field. Turning third and being waved to the plate is Hargrove. Here comes the throw by Mosby. It's up the line. Hargrove scores. Hassey goes to second. And the Indians lead 2 to nothing. Ron Hassey, like he did so many times last year, delivers in the clutch again with a runner in scoring position. A line drive single to right. Indians' second run, like the first, will be unearned. And the Tribe will take it. Hassey goes to second on the throw home. So the Indians teeing off on Luis Leal here in the first inning. And all of it is not of his own doing. Here is Toby Hera hitting at 233 with Hassey at second and two outs. Hera with a home run this year and seven RBIs looks at a curve for a strike. Toby is looking for his first hit against the Blue Jays this year. He went 0 for 7 in the two-game set in Toronto. Hitting 263 lifetime against Blue Jays pitching. Leal with a stretch. A look back to Hassey. And the pitch a swing and a miss. Strike two. 
in the National League tonight. Cincinnati did not score in the first inning at Pittsburgh. Pass story for the Reds and Perez for the Pirates. St. Louis at Atlanta. The Cardinals did not score in the first inning. Sorensen against Bob Walk. The strike two pitch to Toby Herrick. Strike three call right at the knees. Toby took it. And that's all for the Indians here in the first inning of play. But for the Tribe in the first, they get two runs, and they did so on a pair of base hits. One error by Toronto, making both runs unearned, and the Indians left one man aboard. After one inning tonight, it's the Indians two and Toronto nothing. In the second inning for the Toronto Blue Jays, John Mayberry will lead off against Len Barker, and he'll be followed by Willie Upshaw and Damaso Garcia. The Indians now leading it two to nothing. The Atlanta Braves scored two runs in the bottom of the first, and they take a 2-0 lead over the Cardinals. So Atlanta gets two off Larry Sorensen. Chicago will be at Houston tonight, rounding out the National League schedule. Caudill against Necro. Also Philadelphia at San Diego, New York at L.A., and Montreal at San Francisco. Those three will be out west later tonight. The Dodgers have won four straight. How about that kid Valenzuela? 8-0. A three-hitter last night, but two of them are home runs by Chris Spire and Andre Dawson. The first two gophers that Valenzuela has surrendered this year so apparently he is partially human if not entirely human I watched that guy on cable television last night and he is sensational John Mayberry hitting at 271 with four home runs and 11 RBIs the wind up by Barker the pitch to Mayberry at the knees for a strike Mayberry one for five against the tribe this year and that was a home run in Toronto the Indians play Mayberry as a dead pull hitter. The strike one pitch down low, one and one. However, they do not deploy the shift that they use in Toronto where they take the shortstop and put him around to the first base side of second. Verizer is toward the second base bag, but about 15 feet away. Kuiper is well in the hole at second. The one one pitch to Mayberry outside ball two. Jimmy Williams coaching at third for Toronto and Dennis Menke over at first. This is Parker's first start of the season against Toronto and his fifth start overall. And he has two complete games, including a shutout. The 2-1 pitch to Mayberry smashed foul. Dennis Menke has to hop out of the way and the ball caroms off the railing in front of the box seats down the right field line and George Orta has to retrieve it. Two and two, the count to big John Mayberry. This is power against power. Barker against Mayberry. Lenny with a brilliant 1.67 earned run average this year. Good for third in the American League. Mayberry swings and it's a pop-up behind the bag at second. Manning comes in. Rick is calling. And Manning makes the catch one down. So Barker disposes of the dangerous John Mayberry. And here is Willie Upshaw. Upshaw is the Blue Jays designated hitter tonight. Hitting at 208 with three home runs and nine RBIs this season. Upshaw 0 for 4 against the Indians this year. He can play first base. He can also play the outfield. And he's a fast man. Barker is ready. The windup and the pitch to Upshaw, a fastball strike. Lifetime against Toronto, Lenny Barker is 1 and 2 with a 5.48 earned run average. That victory came last year when he went seven innings and pitched two hit baseball over seven innings and the try beat Dave Steeb and the Blue Jays six to one. Swing and a miss on that pitch on the inside corner strike two. If you're just joining us the Indians hit the Blue Jays with a two spot in the bottom half of the first inning to take a two nothing lead and we'll get a station break coming your way at the first available opportunity. The windup and the strike two pitch high and away one and two. On deck is Damaso Garcia. Now the rain has lightened considerably here at the stadium. Down to just a fine mist or drizzle. The 1-2 pitch, a swing and a tapper foul behind home plate. And now let's pause for station identification. This is the Cleveland Indians Baseball Network. up a new baseball and the count on Upshaw is one and two. Lenny rocks into the windup 
And the one-two pitch, there's a ground ball, bounce toward Kuiper, a slow roller. He has to wait for it to throw to first, and they get Upshaw by a step. Kuiper had to wait for that ball to come to him, and you can't waste much time with Upshaw going down the line, but Kuiper got rid of it just in time. Two up and two down. Barker has retired the first five men he's faced tonight, and here is Damaso Garcia, the second baseman. Garcia hitting at 222, no home runs, two RBIs, 0 for 4 against the Tribe this year. We'd like to pass along best wishes to lifelong Indians fan Martin Burich of Lorraine, who's currently in Elyria Hospital. He had open heart surgery earlier this week. So, Martin Burich, we hope you're feeling better. Thanks for listening, and we hope the Tribe can provide you with some excitement tonight. The first pitch is slashed down the first base line and just foul, according to first base umpire Greg Koss. Garcia nearly had a two-base hit as he rammed that ball right over the bag, but foul. Mm, that was close, a matter of inches. Greg Koss, the first base umpire, resides here in northeast Ohio in Medina. The strike one pitch to Garcia. He hits it in the air to left center. Manning going over that way. Still going over. Rick reaches up and he makes a running catch. So Manning covered a lot of ground there. He was shading Garcia the opposite way into right center. But Manning goes a long way toward left center and hauls down the drive by Damaso Garcia. That is all for the Blue Jays here in the second. Again, they go up and down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nothing across. And after one and a half innings tonight, it's the Indians two and Toronto nothing. Luis Leal is taking his warm-up pitches for the Toronto Blue Jays, and in the second inning, he'll face the bottom three in the Indians' batting order tonight. Joe Charbonneau, Dwayne Kuyper, and Tom Verizer with the Tribe leading it two to nothing. Don't forget the Indians and Blue Jays tangle again here tomorrow afternoon. Wayne Garland will go for the Tribe against Jackson Todd, a right-hander. There's the ovation for Charbonneau. Game time, 2.05 tomorrow. And then a big Sunday bat day doubleheader. The first game starts at 1.05. Burt Blylevin and Rick Waits are scheduled to battle Dave Steve and as yet an undecided pitcher in the nightcap for Toronto. Boy, you don't want to miss that Blylevin steve matchup. Charbonneau swings and skies the first pitch out of play down the right field line. It hits the facing of the upper deck and drops downstairs. Well, the rains must be widespread because in New York, the Yankees are scheduled to play the Mariners, but that game has been delayed at the outset by rain. Charbonneau, a swing and a miss, strike two. Frank White just hit a home run for Kansas City in the second inning. One man on, that's his second of the year, makes it Kansas City two. And Boston nothing. George Brett was hurt last night. The strike two pitch to Charbonneau, low and away, one and two. Mr. Brett's on crutches right now. I well, he sprained his ankle, and they, they figure out about a week, but that's one of those injuries you never know about. Boy, what a blow to Kansas City to lose George Brett. They're already off to a miserable start. The one-two pitch down low again, two and two. Charbonneau has hit safely in his last three games. He had an excellent series against the White Sox in Comiskey Park. He was devastating there with a couple of home runs. Now hitting 225 on the season, two home runs, eight RBIs. Joe a swing and a miss on the changeup slider, and he strikes out. So Luis Leal gets his second strikeout tonight. And here is second baseman Dwayne Kuyper. The captain, 8 for 22 this year. That's a 364 average. He went 0 for 7 in the two games last week in Toronto, hitting 284 lifetime against Blue Jays pitching. In close at third is Danny Ainge. The pitch to Kuyper, fastball strike at the knees. Leal has a pretty good fastball. He can pop it. And also the curve and slider. The strike one pitch to Kite. There's a curveball hit on the ground. Mayberry gets it on the big hop. Throws to Leal coming across to cover the bag. And Kuiper is out number two. 3 1 on the play at first. So here is Tommy Verizer back in the lineup tonight. After a few games of inactivity because of a stray muscle in his leg, Tommy hitting at 323 off to a good start this year. No home runs, three RBIs. Verizer, three for seven against the Blue Jays this year and a career 284 hitter against Toronto pitching. He swings and fouls the first pitch back on the screen. The Indians enter tonight's ballgame with a 243 team batting average and eight home runs. 
154 against Toronto. Alan Bannister leads the Indians and hits with 22. The strike one pitch, a swing and a miss, 0 and 2. Bo Diaz has 21 hits, and Toby Hera and Tom Verizer each have 20. The windup, the strike two pitch outside, and it's a ball and two strikes. No outs, or check that, nobody on, and two outs. And Leal delivers the one-two pitch to Tommy. There's a tapper to Damaso Garcia at second. He bobbles it, throws, and the ball gets by Mayberry and Verizon safe. Damaso Garcia never really did get the handle on that ground ball. It's had some crazy spin on it. He bobbled it after the second hop, then he threw wide of first base. Mayberry got a glove on the ball, but it deflected toward the Indians' dugout, and Damaso Garcia is charged with an error. So the second error by the Blue Jays tonight keeps the second inning alive for the Tribe, and here is leadoff man Rick Manning. Manning got the Indians rolling right away in the first inning by slashing a single to left in the first pitch, and he came around to score the Indians' first run. The Tribe leads it here by a score of 2 to nothing. The pitch to Manning goes to butt, pops it foul, and all the way out of play into the seats to the third base side of home plate. Manning now hitting at 171. The Indians are off to their best start since 1966 when the Tribe was 17-6 and six that year and also in first place. So the Indians having their best April and May in 15 years. A throw to first for Riser was not far from the bag. He's back easily. Joe Nasik coaching at third for the Tribe tonight and Dave Duncan over at first. The stretch. The strike one pitch to Manning, fouled away, not bunting there. Rick taking the big cut. It goes off the facing of the upper deck, strike two. Rich Garcia is the home plate umpire tonight. Jim McKeon at third, Don Denkinger, the crew chief at second, and Greg Koskover at first. Two outs and Tom Verizer at first in the bottom of the second. Our Chevrolet dealer's home run payoff inning tonight will be inning number five. The strike two pitch to Manning. There's a looper into shallow left field. On comes the left fielder, George Bell, and he gets there in time to make the grab. So Manning flies out to Bell and left, and that's all for the Tribe here in the second inning. No runs, no hits for the Indians in the second. One air by the Blue Jays and a man left. After two full innings tonight, it's the Indians two and Toronto nothing. Inning number three at the stadium with the Tribe leading it two to nothing. Rick Pacetti will lead off against Len Barker. He'll be followed by Dan Ainge and then catcher Buck Martinez. The Indians with two runs in the first off Luis Leal. And once again, a reminder that our Chevrolet dealers home run payoff inning will be inning number five. Lenny Barker in pursuit of his third victory of the season. And Pacetti looks down to Jimmy Williams for a sign. Well, the skies are overcast, but here's a guy who's always sunny and ready to carry you along. Here's Herb Score. Thank you, Nev. Hi again, everybody. The Indians lead 2 to nothing. Uh, standing in is Rick Pacetti, right in hitting center fielder. Len Barker winds and delivers. Fastball blazed across the outside part of the plate of strike. That's a good Barker fastball. He really popped that one. Indians scoring twice in the first inning. They were both unearned runs, but they count, and the Indians lead it 2 nothing. Wind up be the big right hander again. Tries to bunt it, misses strike. Again the fastball. Bassetti claiming to umpire Rich Garcia. I didn't try to bunt at that ball. Rich Garcia says check the scoreboard. Two strikes. Outfielders swung around to the right. Big gap in center field. Two strike pitch. Outside with a slider. Ball one, strike two. Game started with a light mist falling, and just like that stop now. Overcast skies, and well, it's something the Indians have gotten used to. Two-strike pitch. Ground ball shortstop. Grabbed by Verizon, throws across, out at first. 6-3 on the play. That's the third ground ball that Tom Verizon's fielded already in this game. Those people who... Sometimes we'll tell you, well, they start the baseball season too early. They should wait until beginning of May or middle of May to start the season. Well, 
this year has been proof positive that it really doesn't make much difference. You're going to have as bad weather in May as you can in April. Or on the other side of the coin, you're going to have a beautiful April and May. This just did not happen to be one of them. Fastball up too high, ball one. Danny Ainge batting at 187, right hand batter. Ainge, 6'4, about 175 pounds. Ball one pitch. Fastball is low, 2 0. Well, you know, you talk about that inclement weather, Herb. It's not just relegated to the Great Lakes area. They've had bad weather in Texas. It wasn't so hot when we were there and just about everywhere. It's one of those springs. 2 0 pitch. Ground ball, second base, grabbed by Kuiper at the edge of the outfield grass, throws him out. Here's Buck Martinez. First time we've seen Buck in a uniform other than, well, of the Toronto Blue Jays. Been used to watching Buck in the uniform of Milwaukee. And Milwaukee picking up Simmons this year sort of made Martinez's job unnecessary over there and they peddled him around they finally made a deal with Toronto Martinez right in bat a good catch has a fine throwing arm up to high ball, ball one Buck Martinez he can really fire that ball he, 32 years old ball one pitch fly ball center field Manning backing up a few steps still drifting back Manning is there. He has it. And for the third consecutive inning, Len Barker set them down. One, two, three. Three up, three down. Nothing across. Middle of inning number three. The score. It's the Indians two and the Blue Jays nothing. It's the third inning for the Indians. We'll see George Order, Mike Cargrove, and then Andre Thornton coming against Luis Leal. Leal gave up two runs in the first inning. Manning opened the inning with a single. Order popped out, then Hargrove was safe on the first baseman's error with Manning going to third. Thornton promptly scored him with a sacrifice fly to center. And then Ron Hesse delivered a base hit to right field. And Hargrove, who'd gone to second on the throw to home plate, scored. So the Indians lead it two to nothing. George Order batting at 250 stands in, one home run, eight RBIs. A long time before Indian fans forget the home run by George Order. That was struck in the 16th inning Wednesday night in Chicago. Outside and high, ball one. Indians here tomorrow afternoon. 2.05. Check swing. The curve is low and inside. Ball two. Tomorrow, ladies, youngsters 14 and under, senior citizens, all get the general admission ticket for just $1. Ball two pitch is a strike with a fastball outside part of the plate. Leal does not look to be overpoweringly fast, but he has a good assortment of pitches, slide a curveball, looks like he throws a changeup, and you know, his fastball makes it sink. Fastball nips the outside corner, two balls, two strikes. Two-two delivery. Line drive, base hit to center field. Order goes to first up with the ball is center field of Bassetti and order holding it first is George. George Order gets the Indians third hit of the game. Nobody out in the third on it first is order. Here's Mike Hargrove. A while ago we told you about the birthday of Rick Waits, 29 today. Also 29 today is Chris Russell from Medina, Ohio. She says she and Rick Waits, 29 years old. Okay, Chris. Happy birthday. Also, a fellow by the name of Bill Scourin down there with a bunch of his buddies tonight. He's 40 years old. And Bill down there cheering on, on the first base side. A lot of birthdays today. Here's one. Joey Upton, nine years old. Happy birthday, Joey Upton. Pitch to Hargrove. Hits it high in the air, right field. Going back is Mosby, still going back, and he grabs it. Tagging it first, going towards second order. Here's the throw, not a time. Excellent hustle by George. 
That ball went up in the air. He just kept carrying Mosby. He drifted with it and finally caught up with it about three steps from the warning track. So Hargrove flies to right in order, moves to second base with good hustle. Here's Andy Thornton. Andy has hit a sacrifice fly to center field, plating a run, his 12th RBI of the year. Urban is raining in Boston. The Royals and Red Sox delayed by rain in the bottom of the second. What's that song? It's raining all over the world or something? Seems like it. Hard at ball, line drive. Danny Ainge grabs it, throws to second base. Not a double play, no. Danny Ainge takes the line drive, and his basketball playing stood him in good stead. He leaped up in the air like he was going for a rebound. Two out in the fifth inning is Ron Hasse. Hasse came to the plate in the first inning with a runner at second base and drove a single to right field, getting the run home. George Order at second. Two out, third inning. Indians on top, 2-0. Inside part of the plate, a strike. Indians trying to maintain their hold on first place in the Eastern Division. Yankees and Baltimore one game back. Next pitch inside. Has he has to get out of the way of a, in a hurry. That slider bearing right in on him. In triple-A ball, Herb, the Charleston Charlies are underway. They're hosting Rochester after three innings. Charleston leads at one nothing, and that's the junk man, Ross Grimsley, pitching for the Charlies tonight. One ball and a strike. Fly ball, shallow left center field. Moving in on it is the left fielder, waiting for it is Bell. He has it, and that is all for the Indians in inning number three. No runs. They get a hit. Uh, no errors. One man left. End of three innings in the stadium. The score, Cleveland 2 and Toronto nothing. We go now to inning number four. Top of the batting order for the Blue Jays, Griffin, Mosby, and Bell. Big Len Barker has retired nine men in a row. Three of those on ground balls to the shortstop. Two or three on fly balls to center field. Two on ground balls to the second baseman and one to the first baseman unassisted. So they have spread them around. The Indians with two runs and they have collected three hits in this ball game. Blue Jays have committed two boo-boos and one of them led to the Indians getting two runs. Indians tomorrow afternoon and again on Sunday a big bat day doubleheader. All you youngsters get mom and dad and haul them on down to the stadium Sunday. First 20,000 youngsters with coming into the stadium, 14 under. We'll get those official Little League bats. All the people coming in, with the exception of those who buy bleacher seats. A general admission, box and reserve seats, you'll all get those bats. Strike over the inside corner. Alfredo, a switch hit, a batting left-handed. Looked like he was going to bunt at it. Didn't offer the ball. was a strike anyway. Alfredo Griffin first came to the major leagues with the Indians. 5'11", about 165 pounds. Fouls it back out of play. I well remember Alfredo, the first few days he was with the Indians, he spoke very little English other than by hello and goodbye, bacon and eggs or something. He was taken under the wing of Rico Cardi. And Rico would take him everywhere and right. show him how to do things. Two strike pitch. Down too low. At any rate, Rico, one day, I said to Rico, I said, Rico, I said, why don't we do an interview with, with Alfredo? I'll ask him the question in English. You'll repeat it to him in Spanish, and you'll give me, oh, Rico thought that would be a, a good idea. It would make the young man happy and let him relax a little bit. So we went off by ourselves where there wouldn't be a, too many people around, and <laughs> we had some interview. I'd ask a question. Alfredo, how does it feel to be in the major leagues? One ball, two strikes. Bouncing ball foul, first base side. Alfredo would say something in Spanish, a very short answer. Then I'd say, Rico, what do you say? And Rico would go on for about three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to do about a four-minute interview. It turned out to be 12. 
You got a documentary out of that one. That was one. funny, though. And Mariko really was nice to this young man and helped him out immensely. One ball, two strikes. I'm a good guy, Orby. You know that. I could still hit sometime. One, two pitch. Inside. That almost undressed Alfredo Griffin. He's not very thick anyway. He's really skinny. That ball almost peeled the letters right off the uniform. Two and two. Nobody on, nobody out. This is the fourth inning. Indians lead 2 nothing. Bouncing ball foul at the plate. Count remains. Ball two and strike two. Alfredo off to a slow start, hitting at 208. When we started tonight, he's batting left handed 250, right handed 158. Two two delivery. Fly ball left center field. Manning going back. He's there. Coasting along. And now Joe Charbonneau takes over and he grabs it. Vic was moving to his right, and Joe Charbonneau sort of said, I'll take it. And just stepped right in front and hold it in. That is the first out of the fourth inning. Here's Lloyd Mosby. He has grounded the short his only time up. Left hand batter. Mosby with good power. He has hit four home runs. That's the tops on the Blue Jays. Mosby and Mayberry both have four. The Blue Jays is a team batting at 218, and they've hit 18 home runs. They have not scored now in their last 24 straight innings. Curveball too low, ball one. They were blanked in consecutive shutouts by Scotty McGregor and then Mike Flanagan of the Orioles. A couple of pretty good left-handers. That's right. How about that Fernando Valenzuela? I saw him hurt He's last now night. He's now 8-0. Watched him on cable TV, and he is fabulous. Down at the knee, strike. Ninth inning home run by Pedro Guerrero. Won the game for Valenzuela in the Dodgers, 3-2. At least they proved he was human. He gave up a couple of runs. Both were home runs. One ball and a strike. Drive down the right field line. It's hooking. It is a foul ball. Smashing off the wall down near the bullpen. About eight or ten feet foul. One ball, two strikes on Mayberry. Indians in the lead. Two to nothing. This is inning number four. Happy to report that the mist we had falling at the outset has stopped completely. Somewhere I heard one of those weather fellas today say it was going to be sunny tomorrow. Well, I hope they're right. One ball, two strikes. Foul ball sliced off to the left, goes off the facing of the upper deck and bounces downstairs. Count remains a ball and two strikes. Wouldn't you think it would be the law of the averages, Herb, would get some sunshine? I, I mean, you go, so. you go about 0 for 20, you're bound to get a base hit sooner or later. Well, if people in the state of Florida are smart, they'd schedule the Indians down there. One-two pitch, bouncing ball, hits around home plate, bounces up and hits Mayberry in the, or I should say Mosby in the batter's box. I guess in Florida they're having quite a they drought, have, aren't they? they? Southern Florida has a big drought. All they got to do is ask the Indians down for a little visit and... Take care of that. Boy, I'd gladly trade uh, weather scenarios for about a week. Mosby, young man with pretty good power. And when you talk to Bobby Maddock, he thinks that this young fellow is going to be a ball player that just keeps improving and improving. He's only 20 years old, 21, 20 years, 21 years old. Swing and a miss, strike three. Let's spark his first strikeout. Got the fastball down around the knees over the outside corner. <laughs> First strikeout for Len Barker. Here comes George Bell, right in batter. George Bell. He broke into the starting lineup after the Indians left Toronto. He's responded pretty well. He's hit three home runs. Batting average of 286.
Bell about 6'1", 190 pounds. Another youngster, just 21. Strike outside part of the plate. Right down near the knees. Two out in the fourth. Indians lead 2-0. Wind up. A high leg kick. Slide and missed outside. And they want the umpire at first base to make a decision as to whether or not he swung. He did not. One ball and a strike. Len Barker over the head with the hands. Here he comes. High with a fastball, two and one. Beyond deck batted John Mayberry with that lead donut on the barrel of the bat, and he's loosening up with it. And John Mayberry, always an impressive sight. He walks the home plate. He's just big. Swing and a miss on the curve. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Barker winds it up. Swing and a miss, strike three. Run up with a slider. And that is all for George Bell. That is all for the Toronto Blue Jays. Fourth inning, same as the first three. Three up, three down, nothing across. And at the middle of the fourth inning, the score, Cleveland two, Toronto nothing. Well, we go now into the last half of the fourth inning. Toby Harris, Joe Charbonneau, and Dwayne Kuyper coming up. Indians lead two to nothing. Yeah, a fellow down there having his birthday. We told you about Bill Scarlett having a birthday. He's down there and they're all standing in the pathway cheering up here. Okay. Happy birthday, fellas. We are not the only ones who have been troubled by precipitation. In Boston, they got underway, but that game has been delayed now by rain with Seattle leading Boston 2 to nothing. In New York, they are being delayed by rain. That's at the outset. They haven't started yet. And Detroit is tr trying to get started. They're being delayed by rain. Toby Harris fouls the first pitch away. I think I said Seattle. It's Kansas City who's playing in Boston. They were leading 2 to nothing, but the rains came, and all three of those games being held up. Toby Harris with strike one. Down to low. Louis Leal facing Toby. Toby called on and strikes his first time up. Very close stance for the Indian third baseman. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fastball nips the inside corner. Hannah now pitching for Atlanta in the third inning. Atlanta was leading that game 2-1. to one. But they have changed pitches in the third. One two pitch. Line drive right field gonna be foul. Ball bouncing down in the Indian bullpen. Toby's leg is very sore, but he's a tough guy to get out of the lineup. He says, I want to play. Here's his left leg. Ball one strike two. Another drive foul on the right side. That's going to go out of play. So he'll be up there with a closed stance and just driving that ball to the first base side. Louis Leal. Indians lead two to nothing here in the fourth. Down too low. Ball two strike two. Next inning it'll be our Cleveland Chevrolet dealers home run payoff inning. I'll give you a little clue to our first contestant. Ground ball. Pass the mound. Shortstop Alfredo Griffin has it. Throws. Gets him at first. Toby grounds to the shortstop. That's the first out of the fourth inning. And we'll bring up Indian left fielder Joe Charbonneau. Our first contestant in the home and payoff inning will be James L. Pasick from Cleveland, Ohio. So if you know him, call him up and tell him, Jim, you're going to be the first contestant in the home and payoff inning. That'll be in the fifth. 
Here's Joe Charbonneau. Struck out his first time. Joe batting at 222. Takes outside. Ball one. We've already had two home runs in that Chevrolet home run payoff inning this year. It took us about a month to get to last year. Right. Down low with a slider. 2-0. Chavano deep in the batter's box. Close stands. Feet close together. Down too low. It's three balls and no strikes. Three and zero. Joe gets the green light, pops it up on the first base side. First base and Mosby there. Now it's the second baseman going over, and Damaso Garcia in foul territory makes the basket catch. Two up, two down, fourth inning, and the batter now will be Dwayne Kuyper. Indians lead two nothing. Dwayne Kuyper hit a ground ball to the first baseman. His only time up. Kite batting at 3.48. Wind up in the pitch. Outside, ball one. Lewis Leal on the mound. Right handed. Glivers. Strike at the knees. Leal, 24 years old, 6'3, about 205 pounds. Hails from Venezuela. One ball, one strike. Foul back to the left of home plate, downstairs and out of play. Ball one, strike two. Herb, the mail bag has been open, and we have heard from Doc Worley down in Dover, Ohio, now in his 75th year as a number one baseball fan. Not bad for the doctor. He wonders if we think New Philadelphia will win the state AAA baseball crowd. No hunches. I have no idea. One, two pitch. Foul ball left side, going to be out of play. Doc Worley, he's been writing his notes, I don't know, for years and years and years. Always good to hear from me. He really follows the tribe closely. Sends us clippings from time to time of various things going on. Sends us prescriptions when we're ill, <laughs> like right now with a couple of goals. One-two pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. He'd been pitching him outside, and he moved the fastball in on his hands. So Kuiper goes swinging, and Leal, who had a shaky first inning, has come along strong. He's retired the last six in a row. Indians fourth, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. At the end of four innings here in Cleveland, it's Cleveland two, Toronto nothing. Len Barker in the fifth inning looks at Mayberry, Upshaw, and Garcia. The Indians lead two nothing. First time up, Mayberry lifted a fly ball to center. Indians have two runs. They've collected three base hits and have played airless ball, leaving three on base. Blue Jays, no runs, no hits, and they have made two errors. And the Blue Jays, obviously, they've left nobody on base. John Mayberry. Four home runs, 11 RBIs, and a 267 batting average. Left-hand batter. Pitches a curve outside corner strike. Mayberry, 6'3", 225 pounds. John, 31 years old. One strike pitch. Swing and a miss. Took something off. Strike two. Two strikes. Just outside a bit. John had a notion to go. The curveball breaking in the dirt, and he held back. Ball one, strike two. Charleston and Ross Grimsley now lead Rochester two to nothing after four innings. And the pitch by Barker. Swing and a miss. Strike three. 
Layberry is the third strikeout for Barker. They've all come in succession. The last two of the fourth inning and the first here in the fifth. Lenny now has 28 strikeouts this year in 36 plus innings of pitching. And he'll take a look now at Willie Upshaw who bounced out to the second baseman Dwayne Kuyper. 2-0 Indians. Wind up by Lenny. Fastball blazes it high and away. Ball one. Wind up. Ball one pitch. Swing and a foul back. This one drops Hassey right on the seat of his pants. He was really stunned by that ball. Hit him out of the mask. Oh, that really jars the catcher. One ball and a strike. Indians with 15 wins, eight losses on the air. The Toronto Blue Jays 10 and 21. One ball, one strike. High pop, third base side. Toby Harris drifting over near the railing. In the railing, he leaps up. He grabs the ball. What a catch. What a play by Toby Harris. Right up over the top of the railing. As he caught the ball, he tumbled into the first row of seats. What a play by Toby. Boy, Barnum and Bailey all the way there, Herb. Boy, outstanding. Toby judged that ball perfectly. He got right to the railing, and he leaped, and at the perfect instant, reached that glove over and grabbed it. Standing ovation for and the Indians' third it. baseman. He deserves it. A superior effort. That's the best play like that we've seen all season. Here's the Maso Garcia, the second baseman. Line up in the pitch. Strike at the knees, fastball. Damaso now does not completely agree with Rich Garcia and tells him about it. St. Louis gets two in the third. They lead Atlanta now three to two after two and a half. One strike pitch. Outside, ball one, strike one. One ball and a strike. Tommaso Garcia, slightly closed stance. Next pitch. Check swing. Did he go around? They're going to check to the first base umpire, and apparently he did not. Two balls and a strike. In double-A ball tonight, Herb, the Chattanooga lookouts are now trailing Orlando 3-1 after three innings, and Jack Newsmer with a record of 3-1 and one, is pitching for Chattanooga. He's a good prospect. Ball two and a strike. Outfield is not too deep for Garcia, and they've shaded around to the right. Swing, foul back. Again, Hesse is nailed by that foul tip, and now bounces up and starts to limp around to try and shake off the effects. Two balls, two strikes. Indians with two runs, scoring them in the first inning. They lead it two to nothing. And coming up at the bottom half of the 15th inning, the home run payoff. Inning for the Indians, the new fans. Let's give away lots of money tonight. How would that be? I'm more than happy to give away money. It's not ours, so <laughs> right. give it away. Best kind to give away. Two balls, two strikes, two men out. Len Barker goes to the windup. Here's his pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Len Barker gets his fourth strikeout, and he, for the fifth straight inning, as we tire the Toronto Blue Jays, one, two, three. Three up, three down, nothing across. At the end of five, the score, or at the middle of the fifth inning, the score, Cleveland two, Toronto nothing. This is inning number five, and we have our Cleveland Chevrolet dealers home run payoff inning. The Indian batters will represent the contestants, and the first contestant tonight is James Pasick from Cleveland, Ohio, and batting for him will be Tom Verizer. Tom Verizon is safe on an error. His first time up right hand batter. Louis Leal gave up two runs in the first inning with the help of one error. And the Indians lead 2 nothing. 
Pitch to Tommy, swing and a miss, fastball, moved it in on his hands. Leal, a nice, easy motion. Fastball looks like be a little sneaky. Another fastball, strike at the knees, right over the outside part of the plate. Two strikes. Fly ball, right center field, chasing over Bassetti, going back. He reaches up and grabs it. Almost misjudged that ball. He started to cut in, then had to circle back. So Verizon flies to center field. That's the first out of the fifth inning. And now young Mr. Leal has retired seven men in a row. We go to the top of the batting order. Rick Manning, Jim Pasek of Cleveland. Doesn't get any money. And now our next contestant, M.T. Heidelman of Columbia Station. And Rick Manning batting for him. Ground ball, second base side. To his right is Garcia. Has it, throws him out. Tommaso Garcia throwing out Rick Manning on the first pitch. 4-3 on the play. And quickly, two men out in our Cleveland Chevrolet dealers home and payoff inning. Our next contestant is Al Yablonski from South Euclid, Ohio. And he registered at Joe O'Brien Chevrolet. And George Otto will bat for Al Yablonski. George one for two in this game. <laughs> Order. Batting average up to 260. Wind up Leal's pitch. Fastball nips the outside corner. Good fastball. He throws that fastball and it sinks and move away from the left-hand hitter. Pretty good pitch. Ground ball fouled over near the Indian dugout off the facing of the railing where they had their photographer's box to the first base side of the dugout. Cincinnati and Pittsburgh are now scoreless in the bottom of the fourth inning. Pastore against Perez and in the American League, Oakland did not score in the first at Milwaukee. McCaddy for the A's and Vukovic for the Brewers. Two strikes. Now Leal was ready, but George was not. George steps back in. Two strike delivery. Looping fly ball, shallow left field, it drops the base hit. George Order gets his second hit. And Al Yablonski from South Euclid, Ohio, you are $10 richer. Mr. Orta has started to wrap that baseball with authority over the last week. And our next contestant now will be Rich Dudones from Akron, Ohio. And batting for Rich will be Mike Hargrove. Mike is 0 for 2. Safe on an error his first time and then fly to right. Indian runner at first. Two men out. Indians lead 2 0. This is the fifth. That single by Order breaks a string of seven in a row, retired by Leal. Now, Order being checked by first base coach Dave Duncan. George just had some dirt accumulated in the spikes. Check on the runner, the pitch, curveball, slips it over the outside part of the plate of strike. Indians two and the Toronto Blue Jays nothing, the fifth inning. Now, our contestant now is Al Dudones from Akron, Ohio. Go to first, back safely. Hargrove drying off the bat. Now he's going to go through his ritual at home plate where he is just the batting glove and all the various and sundry machinations of his. Now he's ready. George Order leads at first. One strike pitch. Low and outside, a ball and a strike. Leal has worked rather rapidly in this ball game, but slowing it down a bit now, and part of that is due to Mike Hargrove. 
There goes the runner. Pitches inside and low. Throw to second. Slide. They nail him. Caught at second base. On a 2-6 out is George Order. And in the fifth inning, no runs. One hit, no errors, and well, nobody left. We go to the top half of the sixth inning here in Cleveland to score. It's Cleveland 2, Toronto nothing. Here we go into the sixth inning tonight with the Indians leading it 2 to nothing, and so far, large Lenny Barker has been mighty large on the mound this evening. He is yet to give up a base hit. He's yet to issue a base on balls, and he struck out four. Barker has retired all 15 men in order that he's faced. The Indians scored two times off Luis Leal in the first inning on a base hit by Rick Manning, an error by John Mayberry, a sacrifice fly by Andre Thornton, and a line drive single to right by Ron Hasse. Since then, Leal has been tough, but Barker has been even better, and the Indians lead it two to nothing. After a 50-minute rain delay in New York, the Yankees and Mariners are about to get underway. Gene Nelson, the young 20-year-old right-hander for the Yankees, against Brian Allard of the Mariners. The Yankees trail the Indians by a game in the standings. Here is Rick Bassetti. The windup and the pitch is a strike in the outside corner. Bassetti entered the ball game, hitting at 357. He grounded out to shortstop in his first trip, down to 345, down with the average. Bassetti, three for five against the Indians this season with two RBIs. Barker cranks it up. The strike one pitch to Bassetti. There's a line shot. Kuiper backhands it on one hop. The throw to first, and he got it with a scintillating play. Dwayne Kuiper with a backhanded stop of the line drive. And he tosses out Bassetti, 16 in a row, retired by Lenny. That was the finest play tonight on a ball that's been hit fair. Toby Hera has the defensive play of the ball game last inning with a diving grab of a pop foul. Hera bought a ticket and wound up in the first row of seats. And he gave everybody a thrill down there. Here is Danny Ainge. Ainge grounded out to Kuiper in his first trip, now hitting at 185. The pitch a slider for a strike. Barker's curveball and slider have been explosive, and his fastball the last two innings has been overpowering. The wind-up by Barker, the strike one pitch to Ainge down low, one and one. Most of you know the story about Danny Ainge, an All-American basketball player at Brigham Young. And now plying his trade in baseball. He certainly would have been a first-round draft choice in the NBA and a very high first-round draft choice had he elected to go the pro basketball route. The windup and the 1 1 pitch to Ainge, a strike at the knees, 1 and 2, and now Ainge wheels around and has a word or two for Rich Garcia and then seems to nod his head in agreement. Ainge was brilliant in the NCAA playoffs and triggered the upset of Notre Dame in the Eastern Regional when Ainge drove the length of the floor and scored with two seconds left to topple the Irish. The windup by Barker. And the 1-2 pitch to Ainge, swing and a miss, he struck him out. Got him to go on a breaking ball, outside and low. Strikeout number five for the big right-hander tonight. And he has had excellent control tonight. With a Fastball has been very good, but his slide has been outstanding. In Minnesota, Kenny Singleton has rammed his eighth home run of the year in the first inning with a man on, and the Orioles take a 2-0 lead over the Twins. Mr. Singleton... Entered the ball game hitting 362, tops in the American League. Here's catcher Buck Martinez. He looks at a pitch low and outside, ball one. Martinez flat out to Manning in his first trip. Now Baltimore gets another run in the first inning, and they lead the Twins 3 0 with Minnesota now batting. Cincinnati nothing, Pittsburgh nothing. They've gone to the bottom of the fifth in Pittsburgh. The windup by Barker and the ball one pitch to Martinez is swinging a foul back on the screen. One and one, the count to Buck Martinez, the former Brewers catcher, now with the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays surrendered a minor leaguer to the Brewers in that deal. Barker rubs up a new baseball. He's back on top of the hill and he winds it up. 
the 1-1 pitch to Martinez. Check swing, called strike two. Another breaking pitch on the outside corner. One and two to Buck Martinez with Alfredo Griffin on deck. Two outs, nobody on top of the sixth, and the Tribe is clinging to a 2-0 lead. These fans are excited here tonight at Municipal Stadium, and rightfully so. The 1-2 pitch to Martinez. Check swing. Did he go around? The appeal is made to Greg Kosk, and he says no. Fans are really riding on every pitch now. These fans are fully aware of what has gone on here at Municipal Stadium tonight. Not one Blue Jay has reached first base in any way, shape, or form. The only way they've touched it is to circle and go back to the dugout. Barker winds it up. And the 2-2 pitch, a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Lenny strikes out his sixth man tonight. And all in the last three innings. Again, for the Blue Jays in the sixth inning, the scenario is the same. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning with a score, Cleveland 2 and Toronto nothing. In the sixth inning, the Indians will have Mike Hargrove, Andre Thornton, and Ron Hasse set to face Luis Leal. And before Hargrove steps in, let's pause now for station identification. This is the Cleveland Indians Baseball Network. Grove tonight is 0 for 2. He scored the Indians' second run in the first inning after reaching on an error by John Mayberry. Hargrove slapped a bouncing ball that got underneath the glove of Mayberry and went into right field, and Mayberry was assessed with an error. Then Hargrove flied out to right field, and he looks at a pitch-up high ball one. Hargrove, the human rain delay, goes back into action there in the batter's box. And now Luis Leal winds it up. And the pitch to Grover, a breaking ball as it crossed for a strike, one and one. We have an amusing letter here from a couple of diehard Indians fans down at Ohio University. Tom Taylor and Rich Fagler. Tom is from Elyria and Rich from Aurora. I'll get to it in just a second. Fairly comical. The 1-1 one -one pitch to Hargrove, another breaking ball across at the knees, one and two. For a 58-minute rain delay, California and the Tigers get underway. Witt for California, Morris for the Tigers. You look around her, but all those delays tonight, and we're fortunate to have this one underway right. on time. The wind-up by Leal, the pitch to Hargrove down low, 2-2. Two and two. Anyway, Tom Taylor and Rich Fagler, who attend Ohio University, say that they have trouble picking up the Indians broadcast down there along the Ohio River in Athens because there's no affiliated station down that way in the Indians network. We'll have to see what we can do about that next year, fellas. But anyway, in the fourth floor bathroom of Washington Hall, that's where they get the best reception from, <laughs> from the flagship station, and that's where they camp out every night the Indians play. The 2-2 pitch to Hargrove. There's a looping fly ball into center field for a base hit. Hargrove was hit in on the fist by Leal, but he just wristed it over the bag at second and into center. So the Indians have the leadoff man aboard here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Hit number five for the Tribe tonight and number one for Hargrove. So anyway, Tom Taylor and Rich Fagler, we hope you're enjoying tonight's game in the fourth floor laboratory of Washington Hall at Ohio U. I've heard some strange ones, and that's right at the top of the list. Any port in a storm, right, guys? Okay, here's Andre Thornton. Thornton denied his 0 for 1 officially. He drove in the Indians' first one run with a sacrifice fly in the first inning, and he looks at a strike in the outside corner. In the third inning, Andre smashed a line drive right to Danny Ainge at third, and Ainge made a nice backhanded stab. In the fifth inning in Atlanta, the Cardinals continue to lead the Braves 3-2. The pitch to Thornton, he pops it up on the right side of the infield. Back there and calling on the grass is Damaso Garcia, now still going back, and he makes the catch. So Thornton is out number one in the sixth inning. Here is catcher Ron Hassey. Hassey is one for two tonight. 
He lined a run-scoring single to right field in the first inning and then flied out to left in the third. Hassey hitting a 227. Ron this year is 5 for 22. Last year, the Indians won eight ball games in 13 meetings with the Toronto Blue Jays and took five out of six from the Blue Jays here in Cleveland. The first pitch to Hassey is down low ball one. Now some warm-up activity in the Toronto bullpen. That's a right-hander going to work. Can't tell offhand who it might be. That's Joey McLaughlin. The stretch and the ball one pitch to Hassey down low again, ball two. So Joey McLaughlin, a right-handed relief specialist, is heating up in the Toronto bullpen. The Blue Jays in their road uniforms, which are sky blue in color with the white lettering and white numerals. And the dark blue and white caps. The stretch by Leal, the ball two pitch to Hassey down low and inside, ball three. Three and oh, the count on the Indians catcher. And Toby Hera is loosening up on deck. One out, one on. And we're in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Indians lead it two to nothing. Lots of blankets and winter jackets on display at the stadium tonight. The ball three pitch to Hassey right across for a strike he was taking all the way. Now he looks down to Joe Nasik for a sign. Nasik goes across the letters to the arm to the face to the letters and claps his hands. Somewhere in there is something meaningful for Hassey. The stretch by Leal. There goes the runner. The 3-1 pitch is fouled back on the screen, and Hargrove goes back to first. Three and two, the count on the Indians catcher. And we'll see if Hargrove will run again on a 3-2 pitch with one out. The Pirates do not score in the bottom of the sixth inning in Pittsburgh. They go to the seventh, and Cincinnati and Pittsburgh are still scoreless. The stretch by Leal. Again, the runner is going. Hassey swings and skies it into straightaway right field. Mosby is waiting for the ball to come down. A towering fly. He makes a one-handed catch, and Hargrove gets back to first. Well, and Hassey was right on that pitch. He just got under it a bit. And Hassey knew it. He just... Whipped his batting helmet across the top step of the dugout. Ron would like to have that pitch back again. But that won't happen. And now the Indians have two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. And here is Toby Harris. Toby was called out on strikes to close out the Indians' two-run first inning. And he started the fourth inning bouncing out to Alfredo Griffin at shortstop. Toby now hitting at 227. The first pitch to Hera. There's a line drive into left field on one hop past a diving Griffin, and Hargrove stops at second. A solid smash by Toby Hera to left. Now the Indians have two on with two out. And that's the sixth hit off Luis Leal, and here comes Joe Charbonneau. Charbonneau tonight struck out swinging in the second inning, popped out in foul territory to Damaso Garcia in the fourth. Charbonneau with runners in scoring position this year is 3 for 14. That's a 214 average. And that is up considerably after a fine series against the White Sox. Two of Joe's three hits with runners in scoring position have come with men on first and second. He's two for six in that category. So the Indians would like some more of that magic to continue. Carlton Fisk just put the White Sox on top one to nothing. Home run in the first inning and the White Sox are still batting. That's five for Fisk. The stretch by Leal, the pitch to Charbonneau, a curve is up high, ball one. You know, Nev, you read that letter from those fellas down there in Athens and Akron U. Well, we have a station down there, ACRN, one of our network stations. That's a new, oh, that's on the cable network, that's, I believe. Yeah, they got, uh, That is on a campus hookup down right. there at Ohio University. It is not on our commercial network right, line, but, but it's, it's, they, they are, it's available to them down there. Right, good point. I forgot to mention that. Bobby Maddock went out to the mound to talk to Luis Leal, Alfredo Griffin, and Buck Martinez joined in the conversation. And now Maddock 
the veteran skipper goes back to the Blue Jays dugout. The count on Charbonneau, ball one. Runners at first and second, and the pitch to Joel fouled back on the screen. He had a good cut at that pitch, one and one. The Indians back home tonight after a successful eight-game venture to Toronto, Minnesota, and Chicago. The Indians split a pair in Toronto, took two out of three from the Twins and two out of three from the White Sox. That's a pretty good trick in Comiskey Park. It took 16 innings to bag that second one, and we'll take it. The 1-1 pitch to Charbonneau fouled back on the screen, 1-2. and two. Joe was right on top of that one and just got a piece of it. He is really frustrated now at home plate. Like Cassie, he'd like to have that pitch back. McLaughlin continues to pump away in the Toronto bullpen. On deck is Dwayne Kuyper. Hargrove at second and Hera at first, two outs. Charbonneau stands deep in the batter's box. Twirling the bat now as Leal takes his stretch. And the 1-2 pitch to Joe. There's a ground ball to Damaso Garcia at second. He'll go to first. Almost a wide throw on the easy toss, but Mayberry with a big stretch. Hauled it in, and Charbonneau is out. So are the Indians here in the sixth. For the Tribe in the sixth inning, no runs. They had a couple of hits, no errors, and two men left. After six full innings tonight, the score remains Cleveland 2 and Toronto nothing. In the seventh inning, Lenny Barker will face the top third of the Toronto batting order, Alfredo Griffin, Lloyd Mosby, and George Bell. The Indians have two runs on six hits. They've played errorless baseball. The Toronto Blue Jays, no runs on no hits, and they've committed two errors. And one of those errors in the first inning figured in both runs being unearned. And that's the margin of difference right now. Alfredo Griffin has grounded out to Tom Verizer, and he's flat out to left field. Griffin is very fleet of foot, and he is quite dangerous with the bat in this particular situation because a bloop or a soft roller. And Toby Harry guarding ball. against the bunt coming in close. The windup and the pitch to Griffin. He smacks it on the ground. Kuiper has it going to his left. The throw, and they get Griffin by a step, and another fine play by the captain. Kuiper had no time to waste. He had to load that ball in a hurry. So Kuiper has made stops going to his right and going to his left, and Griffin is out number one here in the seventh inning. He becomes the 19th consecutive man to be set down by large Lenny Barker. Here is Lloyd Mosby. He's grounded out to short, and he struck out swinging in the fourth inning. He was the first of Barker's six strikeout victims tonight. The windup by Lenny, and the pitch to Mosby on the outside corner for a strike. It was Lloyd Mosby who shattered Burt Blylevin's dreams of a no-hitter in Toronto when he sliced a drive to left field that Larry Littleton momentarily lost in the lights in the ninth inning, and Mosby was awarded a two-base hit. He swings and misses a slider strike two. And Lenny Barker is overpowering right now. He just blew that ball right on by him. Now we're getting a light rainfall here at the stadium. The umbrellas have popped out again in the box seats behind, behind both dugouts. And for now, as rain delay in Boston, they are playing again. It's... Kansas City in Boston. Kansas City was leading it 2 to nothing. The windup by Barker and the strike two pitch is just off the outside corner one and two. Mosby had a notion and held back just in time. Barker gets the sign from Ron Hassey and rocks into the windup. The one two pitch to Mosby outside two and two. Barker just flirting with that outside corner at the knees right now. The Indians outfield plays Mosby the opposite way. Manning is well into left center field, and Charbonneau is toward the line and left. Lots of territory down the right field line. The windup and the 2-2 pitch to Mosby. A swing and a miss. He struck him out on a fastball at the knees. Mosby fans for the second time tonight. Strikeout number seven for the big right-hander. 
Here are some gaudy numbers for Indian starters. Over the last 19 games, they've posted a 12-5 and record and a 2.16 earned run average in 149-plus innings of pitching. Well, that rain in New York did not slow down the Yankees. In the fifth, first inning, a, a three-run homer by Nettles. That's his fifth of the year. Three to nothing, New York in the first. George Bell stands in. He wanted Rich Garcia to take a look at the baseball. Parker flipped it in. Garcia saw nothing wrong with it and kept it in play. Bell, 0 for 2 tonight, a ground ball to first and a strikeout. Hitting at 275, and the pitch to Bell down low ball one. On the season, Indian starters are 13 and 7 with a sparkling 2.44 earned run average. Parker is doing his best to reduce that tonight. The ball one pitch to Bell down low ball two. And Barker's earned run average is 1.67 going into tonight's game. Third best in the American League among pitchers who have worked a particular number of innings. Just slightly behind McCaddy of Oakland with a 1.62 ERA and McCaddy is working tonight for the A's in Milwaukee. Two balls and no strikes the count to left fielder George Bell. The windup by Barker and the ball two pitch is at the knees for a strike two and one. And Bell begs to disagree. He looks down to Jimmy Williams for a sign and now steps back in. Lenny Barker cranks up that six foot four inch frame. And here comes the two one pitch to Bell. A foul back. It's two and two. That one hits the facing of the press box and rolls off the screen. And these fans start applauding again. They sense that Barker is moving in for the kill here in the seventh inning. This crowd loves it. They have been treated to an electrifying pitching display by Large Lenny tonight. To say that it has been overwhelming does not do justice to it thus far. This is becoming repetitious for the Blue Jays. The windup by Barker. And the 2-2 pitch, a swing and a miss. He struck him out. For the fourth consecutive inning, Barker fans a pair in the frame. He has now retired 21 Blue Jays in an order. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We've reached the middle of the seventh inning, and you Indians fans know what that means. It's time to rise and shine. With the score, the Indians two and Toronto nothing. In the bottom half of the seventh inning, the captain, Dwayne Kuyper, will lead off for the Tribe. It'll be followed by Tommy Verizer and then leadoff man, Rick Mann. Well, we told you about the three-run home run by Nettles in the first inning. The Yankees must be doing some more business because Seattle has made a pitching change. Allen is now pitching. The windup by Luis Leal, the pitch to Kuiper, a strike on the outside corner. Kuiper is 0 for 2 tonight. He's bounced out Mayberry to Leal covering, and he struck out in the fourth inning. The windup by Luis Leal, the strike one pitch at the knees, strike two. Leal has pitched well tonight. The Indians have only two unearned runs off him and six hits. He has not walked a man. He struck out three, and he has not given up an extra base hit. The strike two pitch, a check swing. Kuiper held up in time on a low delivery, one and two. Now, this is not a large gathering at the stadium tonight, but they have been treated to a scintillating game of baseball, courtesy of large Lenny Barker. Here comes the one-two pitch to the captain, a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Kuiper strikes out for the second time tonight, and that's number four on the evening for Luis Leal. The Yankees scored five times in the bottom of the first to seize a five to nothing lead over the Mariners. Here is Tommy Verizer, the wind up of the pitch to Tommy, a curveball strike. Tommy is 0 for 2 tonight. He reached on an error by Damaso Garcia in the second inning, and he flied out to center in the fifth. The strike one pitch, there's a fly ball to right field, and just about straight away, back there is Mosby backpedaling, and he hauls it in. Two down for the Indians here in the seventh inning. 
Aside from the first inning, when the Indians scored twice, they've really only threatened in one other frame. That was in the sixth, when they had runners at first and second with two outs, and Charbonneau grounded out. Kansas City 2, Boston nothing now after two full innings in Fenway following a rain delay. Here is Rick Manning. He looks at a pitch low ball one. Manning is one for three tonight. That was a leadoff single in the first inning. Next pitch to Rick. A swing and a miss. Well, as Lewis the Al has pitched good baseball tonight. He he surely has. Well. Leal has settled down nicely since the first inning, and part of the problem in the first inning was not of his making on the air by Mayberry. The pitch to Manning, a swing and a foul tip in the dirt at home plate, one and two. Rich Garcia inspects the baseball, pops it back into the glove of Buck Martinez and keeps it in play. Two outs, nobody on in the bottom of the seventh for the Indians. They lead 2-0. The windup. And the pitch to Manning on the outside corner with a fastball called strike three. Strikeout number five for Leal. And quickly the Indians are done here in the seventh. They go up and down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. And after seven full innings of play, it's still Cleveland two and Toronto nothing. Well, it's inning number eight. The Indians lead two to nothing. And on the mound is the big right-hander, Len Barker. Barker has struck out eight. He hasn't walked anybody. He has retired 21 men in a row. And Nev, you have a note? An interesting one, Herb. We have one from Dorothy Schweder, or Schweder, I believe it is. Please announce that my father and brother-in-law, George Schweder and George Schweder Jr., have flown in from Port Ritchie, Florida, to see the Indians play tonight because they still feel the tribe has a terrific team, and they're seeing a terrific ball game. Yes, they are. Here's Mayberry, followed by Upshaw, then Damaso Garcia. Indians swing the outfield around to the right. Wind up by Barker. Up to high ball one. The Indians are not overshifting on Mayberry, putting three infielders on the first base side, as they do many times. Barker, as quick as he is, they feel that Mayberry not going to pull quite as much as he normally would. The outfield swung well around, however. Ball one pitch. Strike at the letters. Len Barker. Barker didn't strike anybody out for the first three innings, and since the fourth inning, he's at eight strikeouts. He has been just in command all the way. Swing and a miss. He took something off the fastball. One ball, two strikes. Mayberry way out in front. Len Barker to the windup. Swing and a miss, strike three. Oh, did he break off a dandy curveball? Barker has his ninth strikeout. He struck out the last three. And he has struck out five of the last six. Matter now is Willie Upshaw, left hand batter. Willie, 0 for 2. Grounded to second and then on a terrific play. Toby Harris leaping over the railing beyond the dugout. Took it out of the stands and he fouled out to Toby. <laughs> Swing and a miss. The fastball. Strike one. Well, you talk about having command of all your pitches. Len Barker has had that tonight. One strike pitch. Swing and a miss. Fastball strike two. The left-hander has started to work in the Toronto bullpen. Herb, that is Mike Willis. Lynn Barker facing Willie Upshaw. One out in the eighth inning. Indians lead 2-0. Ground ball, second base, Kuiper on one knee, has it. Throws the first two men out. Two men out in the eighth inning. And here's Damaso Garcia, fly to center, struck out swinging.
The muscle Garcia, right in batter. He's six feet tall, weighs about 170 pounds. Garcia, 24 years old. Barker winds it up and delivers. Curveball, he breaks it over the inside corner strike. This is a clinic tonight, Herb. He has been behind very few batters, if any. Ball one. I strike one, I beg your pardon. Outside and high, a ball and a strike. Two outs in the eighth. Indians lead to nothing. Trailing. Len Barker has been flawless. Ball one and a strike. Just a shade outside. Two balls and a strike. Trailing 3-2 in the sixth. The Atlanta Braves have knocked out Sorensen, the Cardinals starter, and Cott is on in relief. Ball two, strike one. Lenny Barker delivers. Swing and a miss on the slider. Two and two. So Garcia with two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. Listen to this crowd. Everybody in the ballpark on their feet. Foul ball at home plate. Ball two, strike two. We are not large in numbers tonight because the weather's not been that good, but fans that are here are really into this ball game. Look at that Indians bullpen area. They are all really intense out there watching the proceeding. All two strike two. Lenny Barker winds it up. Struck him out with a curveball. Swinging and missing is Damaso Garcia. And Lynn Barker has retired 10 men by way of the strikeout route. And for the eighth straight inning, three up and three down. Nothing across. For the Toronto Blue Jays at the middle of eight, the score, it's Cleveland two and Toronto nothing. We're going now into the last half of the eighth inning order. Hargrove and Thornton coming along. The Indians lead it two to nothing. George Orders had a pair of base hits in this game. Seven thousand two hundred and ninety uh, the attendance here this evening. They are not large in numbers, but boy, they are into this ball game. Indians leading two to nothing. George Order raised his batting average with those two hits tonight, and he is now batting at 270. Louis Leal. Down low ball one. Eyes all on Len Barker tonight because of his flawless performance here. But Louis Leal has pitched a very fine ball game. He's given up two unearned runs. They came in the first inning. Drive to right field. There it goes. Way back. It is gone. A home run. George Order. Jordan hits his second home run of the year, his second in two games, and the Indians lead it three to nothing. A line drive over the right field fence. That for the Indians is their seventh base hit. Well, that one was almost identical to the one he hit in Comiskey Park, or just about the, the same spot. Comiskey Park, maybe a little higher, but right. this one, same spot, straight away right. Here's Mike Cargrove. He's had one for three. Outside and high, ball one. Toronto bullpen, the right-handed Joey McLaughlin is throwing again. Eighth inning, Indians on top, 3 nothing. Up too high, ball two and no oh strikes. And now Danny Ainge going to run to the mound and have a talk.
By the way, this crowd is shouted tonight. You'd think there were 40,000 here. You sure do it. And it's a crowd that has watched this ball game. A momentum is built. Over the outside part of the plate, a strike. Mike Cargrove does not like the decision by umpire Rich Garcia. Ball two, strike one. This is the last of the eighth. Indians on top, three nothing. High pop, third base side. Down the foul line goes Alfredo Griffin. He's still in fair territory. Drops the ball. In the second base goes Hargrove. Alfredo Griffin dropped the ball. He'll be charged with a two-base error all the way on that. And that is the scoring decision. Alfredo was there along with third baseman Danny Ainge. And coming on was the left field of Bell. Alfredo appeared to say, I'll take it, and then hit the glove, and he lost it. Two-base error. Alfredo trying to make kind of a basket one-handed catch on that. He had the glove in the open face-up position at about his waist, and it looked like it hit on the heel of the glove and went right off. Here's Andy Thornton. He had a run batted in with a sacrifice fly in the first inning, and he is 0 for 2. Hargrove at second. High ball one. The way Barker is pitched tonight, it doesn't seem like he needs much of a cushion, but it's comforting to put a few more on the board here. The Indians can. Check swing. Did he go around? Yes, he did. One ball and a strike. That error by Alfredo is the third error of the night. Charge to the Toronto Blue Jays. One by the first baseman, one by the second baseman, now one by the shortstop. They're moving their way around the infield. Inside, Andy has to get back in a hurry. That almost got him on the left shoulder. Two balls and a strike. Ball two, strike one. Thornton right down near the end of the bat. Still nobody out here in the eighth. Down low, three and one. There has not been a base on balls in this ballgame. Both pitches have had excellent control. But on Thornton now, the count is three and one. Ball three, strike one. And the pitch. Strike over the inside corner. 3 2. The sitting started with George Order cracking a home run to the right field fence and over the right field fence. A line drive that just kept going. George's second home run of the year is ninth RBI and his third hit of this ballgame. Andre, 3 2 pitch. Fly ball, left center field, moving in a position, Bassetti, he is still coming. He's there in the center field has it, holding it second, Mike Hargrove. Out number one in the eighth inning. And it's a good thing Bassetti was able to get over there because left fielder George Bell was way back, and he got a late start. He was sort of looking at Bassetti, saying, come on, you take it. Ron Hesse drove it a run in the first inning with a base hit. He's one for three. Ron Hesse down near the end of the bat. The pitch. High, high pop. Shallow right field. Out goes Damaso Garcia. On comes Willie Upshaw. He calls for it in the right field. has it. Two men out in the eighth inning. And the batter now will be Toby. Toby's had one for three tonight. Mike Cargrove is on at second. Twins picked up a run in the second. They now trail Baltimore three to one after two. 
Three nothing. Indians lead here in the eighth. Pitch to Toby. Lines it foul off to the right of home plate and up the upper deck shot. Oh, and screaming upstairs. Glenn Barker in the ninth inning will face Pacetti, Ainge, and Martinez. Although we may see some pinch hitting. One strike. Curveball down too low. One ball, one strike. Toby. Run out at second. The pitch bouncing ball just in front of the mound. Picked up by Leal. Throws the first. Toby's out. And that is all for the Indians in inning number eight. One run. One hit. One error. One left. And we go to the ninth inning here at the stadium. Ninth inning at the stadium. Len Barker will face Rick Bassetti. Danny Ainge and then Buck Martinez. The Indians lead three to nothing. And the story of this ball game has been Len Barker. Eight perfect innings. Bassetti has grounded the shortstop, grounded out to second base. And the ball hit to the second baseman. Wayne Kuyper made a fine play on that ball going to his right. Boy, oh boy, Herb, this is almost an instant replay of Burt Blylevin and the Indians yes. in Toronto last week. And now they tell us it is raining in New York in Yankee Stadium again with the Yankees leading Seattle 5-0 in the third inning. Len Barker ready to go. Winds it up. Here's his pitch. Pop up back of the plate. Hesse coming back toward the screen and the ball is on the screen. Strike one. Boy, everybody I looking around this ballpark, 7,290. And there are not too many of them sitting down. Everybody on their feet. I'm going to stand up. This is really electrifying. Yes, it is. Len Barker has 10 strikeouts tonight. Hadn't walked the batter. Big Len Barker facing Rick Bassetti. Toby Hara at the edge of the infield grass. One strike delivery. High with a fastball. Oh, one strike one. One one pitch. Pops it up. Third base side. Toby coming down. Foul territory. He has it. One out. Lynn Barker gets Bassetti on a foul ball, and we will get a pinch hitter for Danny Ainge. It looks like Al Woods. And that's who it is. Al Woods, a left-hand batter. Woods is hitting a 215. No home runs, eight RBIs. Len Barker standing on the grass, back of the mound, rubbing up the baseball. Buddy Bell just did a home run in the fourth inning, his third, nobody on for Texas, and that'll tie up the game with Chicago, 1 1. Here's where we're concentrating now. Pitch to Al Woods. Swing and a miss. He, no, he fouled it off. And this one gets Ron Hesse on the leg. That's the third time tonight that Hesse has really been hit solidly with foul tips. Herb just doing some checking here. The last pitcher in the major leagues to retire all 27 men that he faced without anyone getting a hit was Catfish Hunter. And that came 13 years ago on May 8th, 1968. Oakland against Minnesota. You should see the crowd down on that field next to the Indian dugout of reporters, TV cameras. One strike pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Lynn Barker has really matured as a pitcher. Situation, he's retired. Everybody's face tonight. And you'd think, you know, the tendency is to just reach back and blow everything, but that time he threw a great changeup. Two strikes. Wind up and the pitch. He struck him out. Strike three. 
11 strikeouts for Len Barker. He got him on a breaking ball. Be another and, pinch hitter, Herb. And we are going to get a pinch hitter for Buck Martinez. It's going to be left-hand hitting catcher Ernie Witt. Ernie Witt is batting at 188. No home runs. Five runs batted in. Len Barker with a season-high 11 strikeouts. Two out in the ninth inning. Indians lead three to nothing. And everybody in this ballpark on their feet. Ernie Witt taking his time getting in. The Indians have Toby Harris stationed just about even with the bag at third. Len Barker winds it up. Strike over the outside corner with his breaking ball. Len Barker has that great control tonight. Not just getting the ball over the plate. He's been hitting the corners, changing speeds. You talk about a man that's intimidated a team. Woo. One strike. Down too low. Ball one and a strike. I cannot recall Barker going to a ball three count on a batter tonight, Herb. I, he may have I a one or two. I was thinking about it a while ago, and I, I really don't remember. I know he went 2-0 and oh on one right. here, but I cannot remember 3-1 and one or 3-0. and oh. Ball one, strike one. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. He blew the fastball by him at the letters. Two strikes, one oh, ball, ninth that's... inning. Len Barker on the verge of really base, uh, one of the great games in baseball history. This place is bedlam, Herb. It is absolutely pandemonium here at the stadium. Len Barker getting the sign from Ron Hesse. Ernie Witt stands in. Wind up. Here it comes. Fly ball, center field. Manning coming on. He's there. He catches it. Len Barker has pitched the no hitter. A perfect game for Len Barker. And the stands erupt. The players go out. Len Barker being surrounded on the field. He has made baseball history here tonight. Len Barker has pitched a perfect ball game. Faces 27 men. Retired them all. 11 strikeouts. And Len Barker being mobbed on the field. The Cleveland Indians win it 3 to nothing. And Len Barker, what a ball game. Well, Nev, you may broadcast a lot of ball games, and it's almost safe to say you might never do another one like this. Herb, I would easily have to say it is my biggest thrill in sports, and that includes uh, football playoffs, hockey, basketball. In my mind, it even beats the Cavaliers' miracle of Richfield because, as you say, it wasn't just a no-hitter. It was a perfect a game. perfect game.